Hey, it's the footy coach here. That was a comprehensive second half performance by Man City to win today against Manchester United, who hadn't lost a game they'd been leading at halftime for over 146 games or something ridiculous in the Premier League. Tactically, from City's side, there wasn't much deviation from what they normally do. Pep's philosophy is to control the ball, but also control the movement of the opposition defensive setup. For the majority of the game, that's what happened as they squeezed United into their own half. A regular occurrence for any Premier League spectator when City are involved. Ten Hag himself set up United in what seemed like a 4-5-1. McTominay coming into the team for an extra man in midfield but getting licensed to get forward, he scored quite a few goals for United and Scotland, so it seemed like a good plan, and it actually worked and could have won them the game. However, it didn't, and the reason for this was the fortunes of two players, Phil Foden and Marcus Rashford. We'll start with Rashford. United did play some intricate one-touch football at times throughout the game, to be honest to get them out of City's press and onto the counter. They did play well in parts. Rashford's goal, an absolute banger, wasn't down to this though. It's a great ball over the top by Onana, who'll come to him later, and Fernandez laying it off before Rashford spanking it into the top corner. Great goal. Rashford responded to criticism this week, saying it spurred him on to be better. But here's the thing, he scored that goal, and watching the rest of the game, you'd say, that was it. He wasted United's best chances. This one where he was five meters ahead of Kyle Walker and somehow managed to lose the ball. Another here at the end of the first half, a wild swing and miss. And then this critical one where he flopped to the ground after a little arm on his arm by Kyle Walker. And City inevitably went up the other end and scored. This is Marcus Rashford. He's not world class. He's not elite even if United pay him the wages of an elite player. He should have won United this game. But instead, once again, we are left sighing at what could have been with this guy. He's not a kid anymore and that game encapsulated his story as a player. On the other side, Phil Foden kept at it all game. Always an outlet, always looking to be creative, always getting into the box. That Haaland sitter, despite Gary Neville telling us all it's uncommon, it's not, he's missed the most big chances in the league, was set up by Foden. His first goal was just like Rashford's, an incredible hit. Onana had no chance. The second was his movement getting into the right place and drilling it past Onana. Onana had a good game, made a big save early on, but here it's a common theme that you United fans have said all season. He's in slow motion sometimes when trying to make saves. He should have done better. I hope Southgate has been watching, but he was probably just daydreaming about Marcus Rashford as a continually ignored and benched Foden has scored 18 goals this season. The third goal was just the icing on the cake as Amrabat came on to make another contribution, which belies the ridiculous loan fee paid for him and a player who's just ba a bang average mid-table player. There's a reason he was stuck at Fiorentina and not even Juventus who love hoovering up Serie A talent bothered to sign so that's it folks, the tale of the two players, Rashford and Foden. One totally overrated and one who should be starting for England. would love to hear your comments below. Please do like and subscribe and as always, thank you for watching.